Hi folks and welcome to another edition of Checking It Out from the Panthers office in association with the GMB. We've got a packed show this week and we're kind of concentrating on the big upcoming home game against the Sheffield Steelers. My guests on the couch this week, our backup netminder Dan Green is with us. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. And our number one and the league's number one, Mika Veekman is with us. <laughs> And up on the gallery, Eddie's going to be joined later by Steph Litchfield from the Timekeeper's Bench and Mark Leavers, now at Peterborough, but a long-standing Panther, and he was here for that big brawl, so we'll be talking to him about that as well. We've also got John and Elizabeth, special fans, because they're die-hard Panthers fans, and you live in Sheffield. <laughs> no, there's no need to look at me like that, John. You know, we have sympathy for you. Now, before we start talking ice hockey, I thought we better get out of the way, early doors, the Grimaldi Joker moment of the week. We've got some nominations for that. Have you got any nominations for the Joker of the week, Bob? No, I think Linger is a no, Linger good one every week. Yeah. Or oh, how, about, how about the fire alarm? What happened with the fire alarm? In Edinburgh, when we had to evacuate the hotel and stand outside in the freezing cold for 30 minutes. I bet you Linger did that as well. Probably. Well, he didn't come out. He just stayed in his room. All right, we've got a couple of nominations for it. I think it was Colin Smith sent to your email. Yes, Colin, you're going to get your way in a moment. But first, during that game, I was watching the, the web streaming and Derek Riley. Remember him, John, from the Murrayfield Racers yeah. days? Derek Pecker Riley doing colour commentary, kind of. Um, and I heard the little off, off microphone exchange where the fans said, would you sit down? No, I won't sit down. Can I ask you to sit down? No, you can't even ask me to sit down, <laughs> which was tickling me as well. On the way into here to film today, parked up at traffic lights at a place called Asian Corner. Do you know where Asian Corner is in Nottingham? No idea. No, you wouldn't know. Dan, do you? No, I don't know. It's, it's where there used to be a school on one corner, a church on one corner, a pawn shop on the other and a pub. So they call it Asian Corner as in school for education, Church for Salvation, okay. uh, the Pub for Damnation, and I think the pawnbrokers was destitution or whatever. Anyway, a couple of guys go over to one of those paraphernalia shops just as it's opening. I've never seen a rat this big. Big rat, honest. It looked like it played for the Sheffield Steelers. It was a big rat. <laughs> and it, it was on the pavement. So these two guys who looked like they'd had a breakfast of Stella, nice. and the guy opens, he said, there's a rat. So three of them now are standing around this rat on the street. And I'm at the traffic lights thinking, how is this going to pan out? The rat's running around. No one does anything to the rat till the little guy out the shop decided the best way to deal with it was to tell it politely to go away with hand gestures. <laughs> so he ended up with three guys running around the street with his rat. And they're all going... <laughs> <laughs> the rat didn't go anywhere. But I'm getting it. I'm getting the Grimaldi this week. Because, not for the first time, Mika, I apologise. You don't even look like you've driven a Formula One racing car. You don't look like you've got Formula One racing champions money in the bank. Mm -hmm. But not for the first time last week, I called you Mika Hakkinen. I actually heard that. My wife was not happy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she can have the real bouquet later in the show. But I'm, I'm claiming the Grimaldi one. I think it was Colin Smith pointed it out. I'm sorry, Colin. I'm sorry, fans. Love you watching us, love you listening to our commentaries. I think it stems from my radio days, Dan, yeah. when, you know, when I was reading bulletins 10, 12 times a day, Saturdays and Sundays, and obviously they played the races, the Formula One races took place. And it's the only other time I've come across the word Mika. You know? Although looking at your shirt today, oh dear. It's a bit <laughs> early for that, isn't it, oh dear? No. Okay. We got snow back home, there's no snow here, so I gotta get in the mood. Of course you got snow back home. You come from a Scandinavian country. Yeah. You don't where, get snow here? Where a very famous Formula One racing driver comes <laughs> from. <laughs> Am I wonder who that is? I am trying to call him Veekman, honest, at every time. I actually went through a whole commentary calling him Veekman. I was very proud. Uh, Dan, Sheffield this week. Cardiff before that, but let's talk about Sheffield this week. There's an atmosphere in the dressing room already. Yeah, I think um, we've had two great results against them so far. Um, but then, you know, they had good results in the cup against us. So, you know, I'm sure it's going to be a packed house again. It's going to be, you know, a huge battle they've had. They didn't have a great weekend, so they're going to be looking to bounce back. And obviously, you know, with our loss, we're looking to bounce back. So it should be a really good, you know, physical, physical, exciting game. Yeah, Mika, the, uh, the crowd already mentioned there by Dan, I think we'd, as we're recording, we've got about 150, 120 seats in the away section and then just a few dozen 
in the Nottingham section. The mixed block, block three, is nearly all Nottingham fans now. So it's going to be the biggest Nottingham support you've had in your brief but successful, and we hope it continues that way, Nottingham career. The noise is going to be quite big this weekend. Oh, I love it. Um, obviously, the previous games against Sheffield has been great atmosphere and it's been fun to play. And uh, uh, yeah, it's definitely helping us too. You know, it, it's, it's way easier to play and, and, you know, stay in the game. But it, it, it's the big thing, isn't it? One game at a time. So how do you play it one game at a time? Because your next game is a top of the table clash at Cardiff. Well, I don't play one game at a time. I play one one shot at a time <laughs> in the game. So, and that that's the approach you gotta have as a goalie. You you, can, you can't think yeah. too much uh, ahead. Yeah, yeah. And are you? Is, is he rubbing off on you? You know, you had Craig Kowalski for a few years. You've had other goalkeepers as well. You were at she you were at Sheffield. Yeah. So you had some big names in in nets in Sheffield. Does it rub off on you? Do you get different bits from different guys? Yeah, I mean, like you said, I've been lucky to have some great partners, you know, my whole career at different places. And obviously, you know, Mika's right at the top of that list. But yeah, definitely, you know, things you pick up off the ice, but, you know, techniques, habits on the ice, different ways of making saves, different ways of preparing, you know, we try and help each other. And, you know, if there's a new kind of thing out, you know, you have a look at it and look at other goalies' techniques. And, you know, you just try and take a little bit from everyone and things that work for you. Uh, and, and in this league... And all 10 teams do it. The goalies look after yourselves, don't you, really? I mean, we, we don't have the big coaching staff, but Mika told us last time he was on checking it out that when he was in the NHL, they told him to play a particular way and that didn't particularly suit him. Whereas, whereas you as a backup, you get the benefit of a number one telling you and helping you. At least you've got some guidance coming in. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'd like to think we, you know, try and help each other, like I said, talk about different things. But yeah, I mean, we're kind of left to our own devices a little bit but every time we get a little bit of you know free ice or time if they're doing their player stuff at one end we'll you know look at different things skating patterns and like I said techniques and stuff and you know just try and practice things and bounce ideas so that's really good. Cardiff it's going to be a sellout if the fans haven't got a ticket I think the advice is don't travel to Cardiff I don't think you'll be getting in there it only holds two and a half whatever thousand uh, so that'll be a big atmosphere we know it's going to be a big atmosphere here how did he compare in Edinburgh last weekend? <laughs> well, I played in uh, Slovenia last year. We had uh, maybe 50 persons, oh. 50 people at a uh, couple of games, so I'm used to that. But it was quieter in Edinburgh. No, it was louder in Edinburgh. No, no, it was quieter in Edinburgh than it is here. and it will. Oh, be yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But uh, it was still a pretty good atmosphere because uh, our fans were pretty loud and uh, obviously Edinburgh fans are... <laughs> One of a kind. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, you could you could still hear them. Yeah. Okay, and Dan, that must have been a, a, a tricky debut for new signing Kyle Hardy. I mean, he, he made the effort to get here. We made the effort in the office to to sort things out so he could come in and play in that game. But I did warn him on the phone that when he gets into the Edinburgh ring, close your eyes and imagine the opposite. <coughs> That's what you'll normally be playing. In. Yeah, I mean, it was obviously great of him and, you know, you guys to rush him in. He literally got off the plane, uh, short flight, I think, and came in and played. He did great, you know, uh, he was on the power play straight away and he was, you know, he's obviously a really good skater and, you know, offensive style player. So, yeah, I think a few of us said to him, don't sort of judge the whole league in the season by what, <laughs> by what you see. But, you know, just like Mika said, he's played in, you know, France and Sweden. He's seen all kinds of different rinks. So I don't think it was a huge shock to him, but um, I thought he had a great weekend and hopefully there's more to come. He's busy with the boys at uh, training all this week, Kyle Hardy, but we took time out to grab a few words with him to gauge his reaction to his arrival with your GMB, Nottingham Panthers. Kyle Hardy, welcome to Nottingham. You had a, a quick fire introduction at Murrayfield. How was that at the Big Edinburgh Rink? The Big Edinburgh Rink was all right. Um, you know, it seems like a great group of guys. Uh, like, uh, yeah, it was, you know, I was welcomed right away. So the rink wasn't exactly uh, packed, but saw our fans there and they were loud and it's a good thing they were there so you know it's good to get two points on a road trip like that we would have wanted four but uh you know we'll, we'll build on that well that ring might not have been packed but saturday in cardiff it'll be sold out for not even going there top of the table clash and then you're coming home to face our biggest rivals our biggest enemy the sheffield steelers and that'll be sold out as well so two sellout crowds coming up for you yeah. in games three and four well i like big games I like big crowds, so that'll be fun. I'm really looking forward to it. Just put in the work this week and, and get ready for those two. Now, you come to us from the Albenska in Sweden. Mm -hmm. That's their second division, in effect, second tier, yeah. but it's very skillful. It's a very fast league. Yeah, 
Yeah, very fast. Um, I was really impressed. You know, they, they're really deep benches. They play four lines and, and uh, yeah, it was a good league. You know, it's all hockey, hockey, hockey there. And I, uh, I had fun. We had a good group of guys, but. Uh, and before that, Carl, you were in France and a couple of for, former Panther players uh, crossed your path. Yeah, yeah, I've heard. Yeah, I remember Doucette. Um, I played with Marty Gaskell. He was a captain of mine my first year in the league. So uh, he told me great things about Nottingham and the organization, the fans too. So he, uh, it's pretty easy to sell me on it. Last question for you for now. You're looking forward to the first encounter against Sheffield in front of a packed Capital FM arena? I am. I am. I want to see these fans in full force. So I'm looking forward to it. That's Kyle Hardy on his first visit and he came in and tidied up the last of the paperwork and what have you. And they do say that good things come in small packages. He's not the biggest defenceman, but he's got great feet. And one of those that recommended him to us was Marty Gascon, who was a bit of a fan's favourite during his short time with the GMB Nottingham Panthers. Another former favourite of the fans was local lad Mark Levers. He and timekeeper Steph Litchfield, John Edley and fiance Elizabeth will be with Eddie on the Chicksamit Gallery coming up right next on Checking It Out with the GMB straight after this ad break. showrooms now. Whatever your white good needs, whether it's sales or repairs, choose Jim Grice Sutton in Ashfield. With nearly 50 years of family business experience with all major brands, we'll make sure you take home the product that fits your needs with no hidden extras. Choose Jim Grice, Sutton in Ashfield. Friendly family business that cares. Nearly 50 years speaks for itself. I'm Jeff Dimon, and you're watching Checking It Out from the Panthers office with the GMB. <laughs> Ice hockey, the world's fastest team sport, played in Nottingham by the GMB Nottingham Panthers. For tickets and fixtures, visit panthers.co.uk. So we will be playing Sheffield this Sunday and we're going to talk about Sheffield related things uh, with the Panthers. And first, Steph Litchfield, kick us off. Your absolute highlight, Nottingham Panthers versus Sheffield Steelers game. Uh, well, uh, it's fashionable, I think, for everybody to say, oh, the bench clearing brawl, which was a big highlight, let's be fair. But uh, there was another game a couple of years later, um, end of season playoff game. I don't know if Mark might remember this. We'd had a pr pretty bad season. We got Sheffield down here. We beat them 8-2. And the game just basically degener degenerated into fight after fight after fight as we took out a bit of retribution, I think, for the bad season that we'd had uh, and a succession of match penalties at the end. That was a pretty good night. Would you say that kind of rivalry is still very much alive today? Oh, it's still obviously a very big rivalry. I mean, this Christmas with the two games of probably 15, 16,000 people will be watching the games over the two days. Uh, there'll be a brilliant atmosphere. So, yes, it's, it's still a pretty big rivalry, I would say, yes. Now we're going to talk to Mark Leavers. You obviously played plenty of years with the Panthers, and you were there at the bench clearance as well, and you were one of the younger guys. Could you tell us what happened from your perspective? Um, like I say, it was a while ago. So... Um, the main thing was I remember standing next to PC, uh, PC Druin, and it was literally, obviously it kicked off and we literally looked at one another and I can remember his face now, he looked at me, I looked at him and we were just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do we do now? And obviously the benches started going so we jumped on, um, and like you say, as a <laughs> I'm a child at the time basically, so um, gum shield in, tightened the chin strap up and just jumped on, but um, I was just talking to Gary about it there and uh, I didn't really have to do much anyway because... Uh, poor lady had hold of Ash Tate and myself and <laughs> kept us away from trouble um, until Barry obviously decided he needed some help and I do not know why the heck he asked me to uh, jump in front of uh, Alison but um, 
I used my face as a shield for a little while, um, damaged his knuckles just enough for, uh, <laughs> for Barry to get a rest in, so <laughs> it was fun. Plenty of good memories from there. Um, obviously you played Sheffield other times as well, could you tell us something that's really stuck uh, in your memory from those days? Well, generally it was, uh, it was a war. Every week um, that we played each other it was, it was a battle, so um, I think they say it's still, it's still a rivalry nowadays, but um, Back then, it was a little bit more fights or fighters based. I say with Barry and and so on throughout uh, throughout the teams. Um, now it's a little bit more skilled and, and things like that. But um, back then, I think memory-wise, obviously other than the fight, it was it was always the victories. Um, and I do remember my only hat trick being against Sheffield. So <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty fantastic. Yeah. Quickly before we move on, on to our other guests, score prediction for this Sunday. Oh, that's a good one. Um, I'm going to say 5-2 Panthers. Mark? 3-1 Panthers. 3-1 Panthers. So two points for the Panthers, according to our guests here. Now we're going to go to my right, where we're going to meet the Edleys, John and Elizabeth. Now, we can see you're all kitted out with the Panthers fan stuff, but you do live in Sheffield. Is that correct? That's correct. We do, yeah. how, how does that work? Because, you know, it, you're kind of on enemy territory over there. Always in enemy territory. My best friend is a Steeler, and he took me to my first uh, game on the 26th of uh, August, 2000. It was a uh, pre-season friendly, and I sat with the Steelers for one period, got up, moved over to the Panthers, and been there ever since. Now, we got to ask Elizabeth, um, you obviously, your fiancés, and... Uh, how do you get into hockey? Was it through your uh, fiancé? It was through John, yes. Uh, to, to my first game. I absolutely loved it down at the Ice Centre and I just couldn't believe the atmosphere there. It wasn't against the Steelers. It was against another good team. Uh, but then he took to the Steelers match and I'm like, I'm going again. I've got oh, to yeah. keep going again. <laughs> yeah, I've got to keep beating them. <laughs> that sure is. And you guys been following the Panthers this season, am I correct? Oh, yeah. yeah um, your favourite players? <sighs> favourite players this year? I do like Cam, the way he energises the team. Fantastic. Andy Bombach's fantastically skilled. He's as skilled as I've seen uh, in a long time playing for the team. So, and we've got a fantastic netminder. What about you, Elizabeth? Who's caught your eye? It's going to be the netminder. Definitely, because that's the game, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, what are you expecting uh, from this Sunday? Uh, as, exactly. As Mark said, a war. And I think we're going to expect a war. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's unfinished business between Cam and, uh, and, Fitz, and, uh, and Fitz. I think that'll come out a little bit more. Plus, there's a few more scores to settle out there. We need uh, clattering around our eyes a bit more. All right. Thank you for talking to us. And now we're going to go through a small ad break over to Gary back on the couch. Whatever your white good needs, whether it's sales or repairs, choose Jim Grice, Sutton and Ashfield. With nearly 50 years of family business experience with all major brands, we'll make sure you take home the product that fits your needs, with no hidden extras. Choose Jim Grice, Sutton and Ashfield. Friendly family business that cares. Nearly 50 years speaks for itself. Amore. Subito. Say hello to the all-new Fiat 500X. Ooh. The Italian crossover, ready for action in all Fiat showrooms from April 24th. I'm Evan Mosey, you're watching Checking Out from the Panthers office with the GMB. Checking it out with the GMB from the Panthers office and some good stuff there on the gallery with Eddie and the gang. Also good stuff coming out this week at the Sheffield game. The calendar is launched. It's action on one side as usual. It's beefcake on the other side. It's 12 quid each. But if you buy it with a yearbook and someone you know must want a yearbook for a Christmas present, we'll do both for 20 quid from the East Midlands train sponsored VIP desk in the foyer. So the calendar is going public and Mr. August and Mr. July are with us right now. Dan Green, you're on in July. Let's just find that one. 
and have a look. And on, on Panthers Radio this week, Cam Jansen was telling me that uh, we're a really tight knit group of uh, players in the locker room this week, as you can see. That's tight. <laughs> see that, Elizabeth? Lacko. That's Mr. too August. tight. That's tight, isn't it? That's too tight. You think that's too tight? <laughs> No, what do you ah, mean? you're just teammates. <laughs> you know. See? It's not too tight. you got a big game in Cardiff and a big game against Sheffield. But then we come to oh. Elizabeth, Mr. August. Boom. <laughs> what are you doing there? Pull us. Beefcake. Yeah. yeah. We're tight. You all right, mate? <laughs> 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 That's like me. The, no, it's not. Calendar's on sale Sunday. Huge game. We've been talking about it. You never know what's going to happen in a, a Nottingham Sheffield game. Dan, you might have been back up in my favourite Nottingham Sheffield game, but you might have been with Sheffield. Okay. Were you in the cup final in 2004? No. That was oh, before your no, time. That was before Sheffield. I was in the Sheffield. Yeah, I was in That's the my favourite, because I think, you know, we always savour the wins against the likes of Sheffield, but when you win the cup on their ice yeah. and you do it in overtime in sudden death, it's and the sweet. big chunk of it goes quiet, <laughs> and just that little corner, that corner up there is going berserk. That's as sweet as That's it comes. That's pretty special, yeah. Rivalries like ours. Have you come across them elsewhere around the, the leagues? Are there, are there big rivalries? Yeah, I mean, in Finland, there were some big ones uh, when I played in Jokerit. I played IFK, it's yeah. from the same city. It's a pretty big rivalry. I mean, played an outdoors game, too, against them. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, you know, it's a bit like a uh, Bracknell versus Basingstoke, isn't it? Similar, yeah, I heard that's pretty big these days. Um, it was always Bratton and London back in the day in, in, yeah. the, in the Super League, but yeah, I guess Bratton and Bays and Soak, they're the two, or Bratton and Guildford, they're all quite close. A lot the of those the teams. big one originally with the Panthers used to be Nottingham against Streatham. Because really? when, when Panthers first got going again, Streatham was the team they couldn't beat. Yeah. And, and, you know, they had the likes of Gary Steffen playing for Streatham and Gary Bryan in goal. Yeah. And, and some big guys and what have you, you know, Gary Bryan, he was a goalie like you too. Bruno, well. he, he slipped over and fell backwards and broke his neck oh. at training. He didn't know, he played on. He just broke old school. Broke his neck. Old school, <laughs> old school, old school. Will it be old school this Sunday at home to Sheffield? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, um, I say it's, it's always a war against them, you know, whatever occasion, League Cup, their rink, playoffs are rink, you know, we always want to beat them. So, yeah, I think it will be. Um, pretty physical and uh, I think the team that's sort of you know the aggressor and more physical and things will probably be the winner it normally is yeah they, they, they hit the checkbook again this week trying to change it yeah. the, the th and the coach I don't know what he hit but he, he, he got going on them didn't he after the after last weekend I heard a little sound bite of a um, <clears throat> of an interview after the game obviously you know like we were talking about before they've obviously lost a couple of games so I'm sure he's you know trying to get a reaction out of them and you know, they've brought a guy in. I've, I've heard his name before. I don't know too much about him, but I think he's quite a big physical presence. So, yeah, I'm sure he's trying to sort of kickstart the team and get them back on the push for the, for the league. So it should be should be interesting. Yeah, a couple of a couple of teams were chasing. Desbian, I think yeah. his name is. Um, he came, I, I know he was on our radar in the summer and what have you, but uh, you watch it all from the back, Mika. One last word from you. Are you happy with what you're seeing as you look down the ice? Oh yeah, I mean uh, we're improving every week. I, I think uh, last couple of games, uh, really good defense. Guys are blocking a lot of shots. Uh, that didn't happen that much in the, the start of the year. So I think we're going the right way all the time. So yeah, I'm I'm happy with it. And you with know them. what to expect in Cardiff if you've been before. That's the tight ring. I, w I would imagine the bigger ice surface is more difficult to cope with when you're a goalkeeper than when it gets a bit smaller. I mean you got to be ready all the time when it's a small rink. Uh, Obviously, Cardiff is a good team in, in, in their rink, a better team in their rink than on the road. Um, so, yeah, we got to be really careful there and uh, just play the, the same way we, we've done the last couple of games there. All right. Thanks for joining us. Um, one last thing before we go. Uh, we must mention the Flower Vision Bouquet of the Week Award. And we must thank Flower Vision as well, because this game on Sunday was originally slated to take place on Saturday. But then uh, a group called Mumford & Sons came in and took the date away from us. So we had to flip it. We flipped some other uh, fixtures as well. And to be fair, thanks to Coventry and Cardiff who played ball as well. So we've ended up with a Sunday game rather than a midweek game. And we will be doing the Flower Vision on Sunday after the game during the Man of the Match ceremonies. Uh, Earthing Services are sponsoring the game. The Flower Vision Imaginary Bouquet of the Week. Well, we nearly shared it, me and Michelle, for putting the effort in and getting Kyle Hardy in so quickly. But then the same person that nominated yours truly for not knowing the name of our goalkeeper, do know it, 
just slipped out wrong, uh, also nominated Steve Lee. Apparently one of the le women in the crowd got hit with the puck. Oh, yeah. and, and, and speaking of the flower vision bouquet, Stevie made sure a bouquet was passed back to her. So big bouquet to Stevie. Your missus will want to know why she doesn't get one, but big bouquet to Stevie for helping us to appreciate our fans to the extent that you did. Mika, Dan Green, Mark Levers, Steph Litchfield, John and Elizabeth, thanks for joining us on this week's edition of Checking It Out with the GMB from the Panthers office. Thanks for watching and thanks for watching the GMB Nottingham Panthers. Thank <laughs> you.